Okay guys, what's up and welcome to today's video. I'm going to be doing a digital delivery. Uh, what that means is I'm going to show you all of the buttons and controls on this 2020 S1000RR, very similar to how I would be as if you were picking up the bike for me in person. But because of everything that's going on currently in today's world, obviously with the COVID crisis, um, there isn't much person-to-person -person contact going on nowadays. So this is going to be a social distancing delivery of the 2020 S1000RR. Let's dive right in. I always start with my clients on the right hand uh, side of the bike because I feel like it's easier because there's less buttons. So real quick and easy, this top button right here, what I like to call the top button, is the heated grips button. You'll see if you press it, you get a little three that pops up at the bottom of the TFT. Uh, that is for the highest heat setting, two is for the mid heat setting, one is for the lowest heat setting. And then one more press is off. So heated grips, three, two, one, off, very, very simple. In many of my other videos, I've talked about what this button does. This is the engine mode button. You'll see top right corresponds, rain mode, road mode, dynamic mode, and then race mode. We've been over that, so we'll leave that in rain. And then obviously start stop button. the bike to life all right and that is also the kill switch uh, and that's pretty much it for the right side so that's why I start there because it's it's a lot easier uh, there's a lot less buttons moving to the left hand side I always tell uh, my clients almost on any bike that you pick up a GSA a double R an XR to feel for this button because you'll never see it when you're riding it and even from your view you'll see it's hidden behind the cruise control button but this is where your high beam switches. It's literally right off of the bar index or right off the handlebar index finger um, distance will be able to get to that. Pulling is flash to pass, pushing it forward leaves your high beam on. So if pull gets people's attention, push leaves the lights nice and bright. All right, easy and simple. The button below that is the cruise control. Uh, almost standard on most BMWs at this point, uh, the motorcycles, um, is gonna be cruise control. So this is your cruise control master switch. Sliding that to the right arms the system. Pushing this little switch in between sets the speed. If you push it forward once your speed is set, you'll accelerate through cruise control. If you pull it back, you will decelerate through cruise control. If you activate the clutch, the front brake, back brake, um, you will disengage cruise control kind of like you would normally in a car. Uh, you can upshift through cruise control. I have done that before on my GS. So if you set a speed and you need to shift to get to that speed, you can do it and it won't interrupt cruise control. Or a nice little trick that I learned is if you roll this throttle forward, it'll also cancel cruise control while you're riding just in case you don't want to grab the brake or grab the clutch um, to shut down cruise control you might just want to roll off uh, some speed without slowing down too much you can actually see there's a little bit of play in the throttle to go forward and that will disengage cruise control also sliding the master switch over will disengage cruise control as well hazard button pretty self-explanatory you'll have your uh, abs button this button is specifically to turn abs and traction control on or off You'll have your DTC dynamic traction control intervention button. You can either raise the amount of traction control or lower the amount of traction control. Um, this is going to be your menu button, which is often simultaneously used with the thumb wheel. The thumb wheel has the ability to scroll forward, scroll backwards, click to the left and click to the right, depending on what you're doing. And I'll show you, but this is a very important motion that people don't really understand how it works um, right off of the bat. So it can scroll forward by rolling forward. It can roll backwards. It can also click to the left and click to the right. All right, so we're gonna be using that a lot to kind of display what's in the TFT. Um, and we'll do that in a little bit of a closer view, but I want everyone to kind of see the buttons and the setup um, right now. So once you have this, this, this figured out, you've only got two more buttons, your left, or rather your turn signal button, left for left, right for right, center for cancel, and they are self-canceling turn signals on the 2020. S1000RR and the button below that is the horn, all right? So heated grips, engine mode, start, stop button, high beam activation, cruise control, hazard switch, ABS traction control switch, uh, menu button, traction control intervention, or rather traction control measurement switch rather, um, turn signals beneath that, and then the horn at the very bottom, all right? And then you've got what we like to call the thumb wheel, goes forward, goes back, goes left, goes right. All right, so I'm gonna switch us into a little bit of a tighter view uh, because I want to kind of dig into what we're looking at on the screen. Most of it is, is pretty normal um, at this point. 
a lot of people have seen what the TFT looks like, but you might see a couple other things on the screen. Like for instance, what is that white speed sign or speed limit sign looking thing? What does that do? That is a uh, speed limit sign. The bike is actually connected to BMW's Motorrad app and you'll see that it has the bike at the top, my fuel level, the um, range to empty in kilometers and you can always switch that over into miles. It has the weather for New York. It also has my rides. This bike hasn't been ridden anywhere so there's zero rides service due. And this is actually where you'll get into the um, navigation that's provided by BMW through the app. You'll also get into some really you know cool tricks and features of the bike and of the app and you can use it all as one but once this this app once you connect a phone and the app to the motorcycle itself you're going to get the speed limit displayed of whatever current street you're on and you're also going to get your phone battery life the helmet connected symbol the phone connected symbol and also your service symbol down there so we're going to zoom in a little bit and uh, we're going to go over those things as well as the rest of the menus all right let's do it Hey guys, I hope that view works well for you. So let's just go over what we're looking at. This is what BMW calls their pure screen. This is just gonna be the most vital bike information. You can see the tachometer, your gear indicator currently we're in neutral. You get the time at the bottom, like I said already, the service status of my cell phone, my battery life of my cell phone, the helmet and battery, or the helmet and the phone symbols being connected right there showing that both are connected to the bike at the top we have our total odometer four miles on the bike again our mode and then the in the middle we have our speed and our uh, rev counter so uh, going back to uh, which buttons you'll use before really to control most of this bike is going to be the menu button and the thumb wheel so i just want you to pay attention to the top where it says total miles which is four by pressing up on the menu button it's going to take you what bmw calls is their status bar so it's going to t tell you all of the vital information of the bike or rather of your trip without i don't want to turn without getting too heavy into into other menus so just by pressing up on the menu button it goes through trip one trip two average miles per gallon one average miles per gallon two it's going to go to my first riding gauge my second riding gauge my first break time gauge my second break time gauge average miles per hour one average miles per hour two front tire pressure rear tire pressure intake air temperature range to empty fuel level and then back to the odometer so that's a lot of information. I'll actually show you where you can go into the motorcycle and take a lot of that stuff out. I did on my personal bike. I don't need all of those meters, all of those gauges, but why not? Now by pressing the same button, the menu button downwards, you'll see on the menu button and also on the screen, there's a corresponding little arrow. When you press that down, it takes us into our first sub menu. Nope, you know what? I'm gonna cancel this because the nav is being annoying. So my vehicle is where I always start because I feel like that's got the most information. Now we're not using the thumb wheel just yet. We're just going to continue to use the menu button. Pressing menu button down one more time brings us to the my vehicle screen. You'll see it has one message displayed. You'll see the engine cooling temperature is 76 degrees. The service indicator is displayed 100 miles, 118 miles to empty. 13 volts is the current battery voltage and the tire pressure uh, monitor for the front and the rear are blank because tire pressure gets set once you reach 19 miles per hour on this bike. Now, instead of using the menu button, what I'm going to use is the thumb wheel, and I'm going to click that thumb wheel to the right, and you'll see it brings us to what we call the OBC, or the onboard computer. That's going to tell us about the journeys on the bike. It really hasn't been anywhere. It's a brand new bike, but this is just going through the menus, and you'll see that arrow button on the bottom again, which means I have a corresponding button to press on my menu button. This is how I would reset all of the values or even reset individual values. I could go in and set my, reset my journey to zero, my brake time to zero, current speed and all of that stuff's already at zero, or you can have the bike reset all the values for you. Going back up to the OBC and clicking on, or rather pressing on the thumbnail to the right again, will bring us to our trip computer. And that's specifically for the trip you're on. Pressing it down again will go to automatic reset, will give you that ability, and it will reset these values every time you turn the ignition off, or hitting reset all values will do it automatically at that point. The next screen is your tire pressure screen. You'll see at the top, it says actual for the front and rear. That's gonna be the actual tire pressure, whatever your current tire pressure is. At the very bottom, you'll see spec, 36.8 for the front, 42.6 for the rear. And then you'll see that little um, graph above the spec, and that's gonna be the differential. So let's say spec is 36.8, which it is, and let's say the actual tire pressure at one point riding is um, 38.2. The 
differential is going to show you how much your tire pressure has increased or decreased according to spec. And that's not a bad thing because remember on a colder day or on a bike that might have been sitting for a while, your tire pressure might be low or on a hot sticky day, you might be running too much tire pressure and you'll know the difference exactly right away. Moving on, you get your service due meter, which basically just shows you the next upcoming service, this bike being brand new and having not being ridden. It's 600 mile service is gonna be the next service needed. And anytime after that, I can go to the service due menu and see if any services are currently due for my bike. The last screen is the check control message. You'll see where it says service due. The check control message screen is really just to tell you the important stuff about the bike. If I had uh, a flat tire in the rear, 10 miles to empty and a headlight out, everything would be on this screen. BMW doesn't make it so that you have to go and check every individual system. You can get all of your information from the check control screen. Now I don't have to pass all the way back left to get out of this menu, just by pressing up on the menu button, I'm back to our first drop down menu. So like I said, if we pop back up real quick, this is what they call the pure display. This is gonna be the sport display. By pressing down on that menu button, the first of three views are our track oriented view. You'll see on the left hand side, you have your DTC intervention level gauge. On the right hand side, you'll have your brake intervention level gauge. In the middle, you have a nice, easy to read tachometer. Your speed is still at the top. And then right in the middle, you'll get your active lean angle. It will record the maximum lean angle for you, but will also tell you uh, how far you're actively leaning the bike over as you go through the turns, and that's always pretty neat. Clicking over with the thumb wheel to the right will bring us to our second sport display. This one more focuses on lap times, but still has a lot of the same information. And clicking it one more time over to the right, another style, or rather another display, kind of highlighting upon both, gives you your lap times, gives you your uh, lean angle as well as your traction control, speedometer, and your great big rev counter in the middle. So BMW gives you a couple different ways to really utilize and take advantage of the information that this bike can give you. Pressing up on the menu button will bring us back to the home screen, or rather into our first drop down menu, sorry. Uh, clicking it right one time will bring us to the navigation screen. So kind of like I showed you before, if you download the BMW connected app and you have a destination in your phone, what you'll actually do is use your phone as a map and then the bike will actually display turn by turn directions. You can actually kind of hear it every once in a while in the background. Um, my helmet, which is right next to the bike, kind of spitting out instructions because the helmet, bike, and phone are all being used as one um, by the computer systems in the motorcycle to give me navigation on my bike. You don't have to pay anything. All you have to do is pay attention to the turn by turn instructions even get a uh, maybe a little RAM mount for your phone so you can look at the map and I think that's that's not too bad. So I'm gonna end route guidance only because we're not going anywhere. Popping back up into our first drop down menu, we can actually go over to media as well. So if you look at media and drop down, this bike will actually play any music that you have streaming on your phone, pretty much whatever you want. It'll give you the album mark, you'll have the ability to scroll forward, or rather skip a song, replay a track, pause playback, go into artist albums, all sort of stuff. So BMW again, really using the technology that they know how to use, that they know how to take advantage of from the umpteen years that they've been doing it, and really giving you uh, some, some usability out of this bike. All right, let's... Uh, Let's kill the music for the rest of the demonstration. After the media, you'll have telephone. So the cool thing about this is, is obviously our helmet is connected and obviously um, our phone is connected. If I get an incoming phone call, I said I didn't want any music. Thank you. So the cool thing about this bike is also, if I happen to get a phone call, click to the left or click to the right to accept or decline the phone call and either continue the phone call through the helmet or just call them back when you get to where you wanna go. Settings menu towards the end. Oh, I'm sorry, and one more thing about telephone is if you do drop into it, you'll have the ability to look into your phone book, your call list, mute calls, pretty much use everything that a full Bluetooth system would use. If you go all the way to the end and go to your settings, this is kind of where you can set up a lot of the bike. I'll go into the racetrack function last only because it's very specific to the double R. Vehicle settings, you can go in here, and what you can actually do in this screen is turn off your target pressure. So let's say spec is 36, you're running 34, and the bike keeps giving you a warning, you can actually turn that warning off as if you purposefully put your tire pressure to a lower setting. 
HSC Pro is Hill Start Control Pro. You have the ability to turn it off, have it on manual, or have it on auto. Hill Start Control Pro means when you come to a stop, what the bike will do is once it senses you stop, then it releases brake pressure on the front brake. It will actually activate the rear brake for you and hold that bike in place. So at a stoplight on a hill, the bike isn't rolling around. You'll have the ability to put it on auto, but you'll also have the ability to do it on manual, which just means that at a stoplight, you give the brake pedal or the brake lever an extra squeeze, and it's going to activate hill start control for you or you can turn it all the way off if you don't like it all right but i use it all the time lap timer you can go into this part of the menu to pretty much set up your lap timer the way you like it uh, for your track day for your race events whichever you prefer a lot of guys have standalone um, lap timers but if not bmw has one built into the bike and then obviously with your shift light, you can go in here and configure the frequency, configure the brightness, where it starts and where it ends. If you go into DDC calibration, most likely the bike will tell me that it is not needed, but to calibrate your DDC, which is the dynamic dampening control, the electronically damped suspension for BMW, you can recalibrate it straight through here. Maybe it's doing something funky, maybe it doesn't feel right, but you'd be able to do that without having to take it into a service department. So that's pretty neat. Pressing back or rather going back a screen will go into connections. You'll see that mobile device, my iPhone is paired, rider's helmet, my Cena 20S is paired, and then I have the ability to pair one more helmet. So if I had a passenger's helmet, they would basically be able to share all the music and things that I'm listening to as the Bluetooth systems have intercoms built in so we'd be able to carry a conversation as well. Popping back to our settings menu, Display shows the brightness, shows the speed limit info, if you want that or not. You can see as I select it or deselect it, you don't have to choose it to have it there if you're using the app. And the status line content is what I called all of that information up top in the pure screen, in that start screen, the main screen that we're using. So you'll see you have the ability to see the fuel tank level, the odometer, two trip recorders, two consumption recorders, two riding time recorders, two brake time recorders, two average speed recorders, and your tire pressure and intake air temp. A lot of people aren't going to use many of those. You can go in. What I did with my bike is deselect the second of each one because maybe I just want to use one, but I definitely don't want to scroll through all of these things if I just really quickly want to get to my tire pressure or to my uh, range to empty. So status line content, go in, select, deselect. I'm using, I'm, I'm doing this by the way, all by clicking right and left on the uh, thumb wheel. So this is how you would kind of control your status line content. Sorry if I keep skipping back. Now, back up into vehicle settings, kind of, or rather, no, we've done that all, and to be to display. And information is more so uh, stuff for the service shop, licenses for all of the um, software in the bike, and also a software version, just to see if it needs an update or not, all right? And if we go right back up, obviously, reset all is reset all. Bring it back to factory settings, how the bike came from the factory. Now, if we go into racetrack, and by selecting racetrack, you'll see all connectivity functions are disabled in racetrack mode. So the minute I select OK, you'll see my phone is going to disappear from the right bottom of the screen. And that's because we've just told the bike that we're gonna do some serious racetrack stuff and the bike doesn't want to distract me with any type of cell phones or music or any of that stuff. So the phone is out of the situation or rather the configuration. Now, if we click over to the right again using the thumb wheel, you'll see that the race pro riding mode can now be highlighted and then configured, which gives us the ability to have three separate race pro riding modes. Now, you'll see the riding mode has automatically switched to race up top, and by pressing that same engine mode, I'll have race pro one, race pro two, race pro three, and then regular race. Obviously, those correspond to the race pro one, two, and three here, which means I can go into it, I can see how I want my engine throttle response set up, my engine brake set up, my traction wheelie, ABS, dynamic dampening control, all of these set up, and I can have three separate, um, three separate profiles for this. So if I am either maybe trying something out in the morning, trying something out in the afternoon, or I'm at a home track and you just kind of want to have some quick go-to preferences, this is how you would uh, set that up. But you always make sure that after the fact, you might want to uh, disconnect it or else you won't be able to use any of the connectivity functions, the phone or anything like that on the ride home. Light warnings is obviously going to give you the warnings for any of the um, pit lane limiters, 
all of the warnings that you would get and you want to make sure that you have while you're on the track and then pit lane limiter you can actually go and configure if you're doing a mock race or if you're you know doing a real race and you want to have a true pit, pit lane limiter you can go in and set the rpm at which you will not be able to pass once it is activated all right and for the most part I wanted to kind of keep it short and sweet, wanted to kind of get to the nitty gritty. Uh, hopefully a lot of people can maybe reference this if they have a bike at home and they didn't really get too much instruction from their dealership, obviously because of the social distancing, you know, we don't have the ability to do this in person. You'll see that these are now grayed out because my phone has been disconnected. So that's why that looks like that. But I hope you guys learned something. I hope you guys liked the video. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comments. If you want me to focus on another bike or do a different digital delivery um, run through the buttons run through the tft on a different bike drop it in the comments send me a message i'm always looking for some feedback to uh to make these videos better for you guys so i'll see you in the next one hey guys i forgot to mention a pretty important part if you look at the right hand side of the screen you'll see those two lights flashing the top one indicates the abs light and the bottom one indicates the traction control light almost every current BMW motorcycle has those two flashing lights if they are equipped with ABS, which all of them are. If they also have traction control, they'll have that light. But that is just a system self-test. It's just waiting for the bike to see about three to five miles per hour. Uh, wants to see the wheels roll a couple times. It wants to make sure that the ABS rings and everything is okay. And then normally within 10 seconds of you starting off, those two lights are going to uh, turn off. So don't worry about that. That's completely normal. And hope you enjoy the video. All right, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Thanks, guys.